Hello, I'm Anthony. I'm in the process of writing this song at the moment. It's called River Song, and I'm at the stage where I've finished writing all of the notes. And so what I'm going to do today is lead you through the various processes that I go through to get this thing ready for the mixing stage. I find it really helpful to treat mixing as a completely separate process where I'm done with writing the music and I try to prevent as much as possible, allowing myself too many opportunities to go back and dabble with the music. So what I'm going to do today is render all of the music in this song down to audio files, ready for mixing with the songwriting part of the process basically done. So the first thing that I need to do is create a brand new copy of this song. At the moment, we have the Cubase Pro Project River Song. That's not going to do for this purpose. I want to keep this song exactly as it is, utterly sacrosanct, so that if in the mixing process I make any mistakes or change my mind about something that's effectively a one-way gate, I can get back to this, uh, this point. And so what I'm going to do is create a brand new folder to start this project from, from scratch. I'm not going to rely on the Cubase CPR files to get me out of this because I'm going to be messing around with the audio folders. I don't want to get stuck. Uh, potentially inadvertently deleting an audio file that I then need later. So what I'm basically going to do is copy this folder in its entirety. I'm going to copy it into the Cubase Projects folder that all of my songs live in. So it's going to be at the same peer-to-peer -peer level as the original song. Just down below the currently selected folder, you can see that that process is finished. I'm now going to re rename this project River Song Rendered. I'm going to go into the folder and then I'm going to start basically cleaning stuff up. Any project file that isn't the basic standard River Song project file, don't need any of the backups, don't need any of that nonsense, get rid of it all. Don't forget I've still got the original song loaded in the background here, it doesn't matter a jot. I've now created a brand new totally independent copy of it and I'm also going to rename this project so that when I'm looking at them in the hub I can differentiate between them. With that done, I'm now going to close the River Song project and open this new project. And the way I do that is go to File Open and basically manually navigate to it. Cubase doesn't know it's there, I've just copied and pasted the project, but once I've opened it, it'll be remembered in my favourites uh, and it'll be in the hub available as a recent file. It's always going to get, send you this message to say the project file has moved because I've copied that project and inside the preferences for that project are its current location. All you have to do is say, yep, I'm perfectly happy pointing at the new location. And here we are back up and running. You can now see that I've loaded the River Song rendered project. So there is nothing, there is no harm I can do to this project now. It's completely safe. My original file is completely safe and I can start butchering this thing getting it ready to mix. Okay, let the butchering begin. The first thing that I want to do is get rid of all the metadata tracks. I've got um, a key transposition tool up here, Scalar. I'm not going to be playing any notes, so I don't need that anymore. I've got some piano guide vocal tracks that were used uh, when I was recording the vocals with Pauline. Don't need any of them. Let's get rid of them. These tracks have got VST instruments on, as you can see, so you know we don't need them. Throw them away. A little bit further down, I've got this folder called Original Guitar. If we have a look in here, there's a ton of disabled tracks. Um, I've recently done some re-recording of some of the guitar parts. I wasn't happy with the tonal quality of the DI guitar that, uh, that, that was recorded in. But just for safety, I kept my originals. Again, as far as this mix is concerned, I'm not interested. I'm not going back to those tracks at this point. If I decide that this entire mix is going to get abandoned and I go back to songwriting, I might want them. But in this context, I don't. So they are out of here. Unmute all the tracks that are muted. Not interested in any of that kind of editing process anymore. And so we're getting to the stage now where we've got a definitive list of the tracks that we want to start thinking about rendering. Don't need to see these meta tracks in the top window. So let's just get rid of some of them. Next stage, equalize the mixer. I've got pan settings here. When I'm in the process of writing the song, I'm constantly doing what's effectively a dynamic rough mix because I want the thing to sound as good as possible. The better it sounds, the more inspired I'm going to be to play nice things. But now that I'm getting to the mixing stage, I want to throw all of those decisions away and start with a completely blank palette so that I can make all of those decisions from a completely clean, kind of brand new objective perspective. 
So the way that I'm going to do that is to scroll across to the left hand side of the project, select my first track, scroll all the way to the right hand side of the project, select my last track. I'm going to engage Q-Link. So I've basically linked all of these tracks together now. Whatever I do to one, I'm going to do to all of them and I'm going to put it in absolute mode, which means that if I now click on the balance uh, on the panner and say center, every single track is going to get centered. If I select the channel volumes and say zero, every single channel strip is going to be set to zero dB. So that mixer is absolutely initialized now and we're good to go. So that's the next stage, initialize your mixer. Now I always render VST instruments one track at a time. The reason being that I've seen Cubase get confused. <laughs> if you try to render multiple tracks simultaneously, you can end up with muted tracks. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, if you know, bung it in the comments below because I would love to know. But I just got into the habit as a kind of safety measure of always rendering one track at a time. So what I'm going to do is head into the render settings and just make sure that all of my um, settings are, are right for what I need. I'm going to generate each of these audio tracks as one event. So here you can see I've got multiple MIDI parts. When I come to do that track, they're all going to get stuck together. The most important of the options is this processing setting. For synths, um, I'm going to use channel settings, which means any automation or inserts on the track are going to get baked into the audio file. Don't forget, once we've done this process, we don't have access to the VST plugin anymore. We could keep it, but I'm actually going to throw it away. That's part of my cleansing process. And so this is a bit of a one-way gate for me. As you can see here, I've got modulation wheel automation on the VST track. Once I render this audio, there's no point in having a modulation wheel uh, automation if I'm basically just pointing at a, a WAV file. So I want to bake all of these channel settings in. I'm going to set my um, tail mode to seconds and give myself a five second tail. If I knew that something had an absolutely colossal tail, I might set it. That's very big. This abandoned cavern does have quite a big release on it. And I'm going to make sure that the file location is pointing at the audio folder of the rendered version. Can you see Cubase Project's Riversong rendered audio? That's where I want it to go. The source track is going to be muted. It doesn't particularly matter because I'm going to be deleting it very shortly, but that's what I want. And let's click go. And here you can see the audio is rendered. It's always not a bad idea just to have a look at it to make sure that some setting in the VST isn't rendering it above zero dB. Everything's nice, nice and healthy there. So, it, so we're all good to go. Then I'll choose the next track down, this SEM sub pop. And I'm gonna use the same render options. So now I've got a shortcut to render selected. Just have a quick look at that option. It's in edit, render in place, and it's actually render with current settings. There it is, but you can see I've got a shortcut set for it. Let's do that. And as you can see, again, audio files built perfectly happily. Have a quick look at it, and we can see that everything is well behaved. Finally, down to the ARP, same kind of business. Quick look, you can always press Z to zoom in on the currently selected track, and that's all perfectly healthy. So we don't need those VST tracks anymore. Select, 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 and gone. Now I like to still maintain the same color coding, but I'll do that after the fact. So I'll just select my three synth tracks and color them green to remind me that they're keyboard lines. That's that bit done. If you want to generate WAV files to pass to a third party to do some mixing on them outside of the Cubase project, then there's an additional process that you need to go through at this stage. And that's basically performing uh, an export, an audio mix down export where you just basically throw all of your audio files into a new folder. And the most important thing is that they'll all be offset to the beginning of the song. You can see I've moved the locators all the way back to the very beginning of the song. And I'll also actually make the right locators just disappear off into infinity. So we've got this big space at the end. Now, when I go into the export um, menu, I can generate comprehensive audio WAV file outputs for all of this stuff. So if I select multiple, basically choose every track. The most important option for you to make sure that you've set properly is this path. Well, in my opinion, it's better to send these output, these mixed out outputs to a different location. 
So I'm going to send them to the dedicated mix down folder. So they're not going to get in the way of the, of the audio files that I'm about to use to mix my song. And in this case, I want to output the current state of the song. So in my effects options, I'm going to say inserts and strip. So anything that's basically going on is going to be output to those audio files. Now I can click export audio. Okay, that took about three minutes to finish. And here we are in the mix down folder. All of these files, either mono or stereo, you can see they've basically got one of two sizes. They're either 94703 or 47353. So they're all the same size because they're all exactly the same duration and WAV is a lossless file format. So I could now pick those files up, give them to anybody, give them to one of my friends, say, there you go, have a go at mixing this song. Uh, and you've got all of those audio files to go from. So now I'm pretty much done with this song for the day. I'll put this project down now. Next time I come back to it, I've got this completely blank palette. I'm gonna start from scratch. I'll bring the drums in, start with the bass and mix the entire thing with no preconceptions about what the levels need to be or how the thing is gonna be mixed. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.